So the first thing we're going to do in our creation of a surface wall is we're going to look at this form and then I'm going to go uh, into Grasshopper and make it into a refined surface that has components. So obviously this is just a regular surface. Um, we're not even sure about how much it is to be developable. I'm going to go ahead and zoom uh, and close Grasshopper to look at some of the features of it. So it has quite a few curves and quite a few axes. So the function that we use, we'll have to really understand how to sort of navigate all that. And so what I'm going to use, I'm using Grasshopper, and this is also a plugin regular for Rhino it's called Paneling Tools. I've already inserted both of the surfaces, and the idea is we're going to use the Paneling Tools plugin. The planning, Paneling Tools plugins work with surfaces and also works with some curves to create different gridded uh, uh, information that also can be worked with attractors and that can also create panels that are 2d and 3d so right now uh, we're not going to start with curves we're actually going to start with a grid off of a surface and we're going to use the surface number though you have some other information like different um, things like grid or, or or working on different elements of distance we're just going to do by number for this um, surface domain and we're actually going to do 20 and we're going to do uh, two of these one is going to be 20 uh, one's going to be 40 we can always come back and change that and we just put in the surface right here and with the surface information we have a grid if we go back into um, grasshopper and look at rhino we see we have a grid on the surface and the only thing of issue is it's actually not straight, so it's not really forming to maybe a brick pattern, but it does give a panel pattern. And I would just go into Panel 2D and have options to uh, either create cellulars or have borders. We're fine with borders. I'm going to just put these in here, take the grid in, um, put also the surface in, give the option of zero. And I'm going to use a panel and just use a slash last to put that in. And so that gives us a, a grid, and that grid could be turned into 2D panels. Uh, you know, it could be also made into 3D panels. And the way to really do that, the 3D panels is going to be this other method. I'm just going to save this as a uh, method one. I'm gonna just uh, carry that down with the origin. And just come down here, group that. Go ahead and disable it. And we just use scribble to sort of label that as two 2D panels. And the reason why we are going to this other method is because we also want to get into 3D. Before we get into 3D, I'm actually going to make the 3D unit because that's one of the ways that the 3D one works. Let's go to solid. Just end within uh, the regular of Rhino. I'm just going to choose anywhere on the canvas. Uh, I think we're also going to do uh, where we snap it. And I just want to have like a uh, unit maybe two by four and it comes up one and because I want to have a little bit of a taper I'm gonna from that top edge do 0.9 for my my tool for uh, the gumball and 0.9 on this axis as well so that's the way it's going to look coming from the first surface which would be the ground plane to the second surface which is going to be the top and so we're going to go back into Grasshopper, and now those are going to be some new plugins. We're actually going to still create this similar grid, but what we're going to do differently, we're going to enable these ones, is we're going to plug this surface in, but we're also going to offset the surface. And we're going to offset the di distance that's going to be the height of it. So we're going to go ahead and do offset surface, take the surface, and one well about 2 or 1.5 is going to be what we're going to start with we only need one side and so that's going to be the second set for our grids and just plug that in we'll just come out here um, let's make sure it's uh, fine here I want to make sure that it's, it says it's actually when it offset it offset at a, as a closed B rep and so that's going to be one of the challenges uh, offsetting these types of forms because it's it's obviously not like a straightforward um, b-rep 
because of all the uh, polarity and just do b rep so we just hit here we're going to explode it or bake it first and then we're going to take a look at it here just going to put it in layer three and just inspect that a little bit now we see that it uh it actually did it as a closed bref and want to make sure that's not closed that helped us figure out what was the issue and I'm going to go ahead and just set the boolean to false. So instead of a B rep, that'll be just one surface. And make sure no command is running. Okay, so it's one unchimped surface, so now it's correct. All right, so as we zoom in, we can see that we have uh, two offset surfaces. And now the paneling tools function that we're going to use is going to be uh, from here called panel uh, 3D. And really, uh, we typically use morph because you're going to morph an object, right? And suppose you're creating boxes, which is that's one method of doing it. Um, I will look at that way. That just takes the, the two grid and creates a grid of boxes. So that's fine to if you just want to just have a bunch of boxes. But if you want to have like some form like or taper like we've created here or some profile, you would rather use this other method, which is morph 3D. Um, pull that right one down morph 3d and we just need to put in those grids the starting grid the offset grid and we're now going to put in that third little geometry which is a b rep and that b rep brick set one object can be plugged in as our pattern object and if we go back into our surface we can uh, make sure nothing else is selected and you'll see we have this profile across the surface and all I need to do is just simply come back and bake it and I'll bake that as my um, layer maybe layer 5 as a group and then we'll uh, do the same thing so we have this sort of surface input here this is one way to have it all done at the same time. I just turn this into a derivative input and do this for the other side. And if I want to sort of keep my internals, I just make sure that it's going into the right place. Just do this. And so, but if I'm fine where, where it's inputting at, no, I should be fine. Um, okay, from this, I'll just do the same baking back onto layer five, grouping it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save this as our uh, paneling tool demo for working on these surfaces. So I'll say paneling tools wall. So the one <clears throat> nice thing about this is definitely, uh, if I should go back in Grasshopper, I just go on new documents so we can sort of hide that. I could uh, very simply come into the the um, Arctic mode, and in Arctic, you know, we see all our little grid there, and it was a very simple tool, simple way to get that purpose and that pattern. Now it's on one side. Uh, I could have obviously, I've done something for the other side as well, but in terms of a uh, just a simple way of seeing the model be developed, that's one way. Now we're going to try a couple different methods also that we can get maybe some sort of brick pattern because right now it's not really a brick pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into Grasshopper for that other method. But Paneling Tools obviously has a lot of different functionality, um, you know, just to go from scratch to create something like this. So we can see how we can do